here is a presentation is let's not build the plane while we're flying it. Um, and I use that because uh, unfortunately, um, this is kind of what we've had to all do the last couple of years, uh, which is uh, we, we are trying to figure things out and building them while we're, while we're flying them. Um, but, but myself personally, as a, uh, as a structure person, um, I think it's important to have structures in place uh, in times like these, um, when we have uh, the uncertain times or the, um, the, the times of the year when uh, things get a little bit harder, um, do we rely on those structures and can we communicate that uh, to our uh, faculties and staffs and, and make sure that uh, we keep, um, you know, keep the plane in the air and, and, uh, and moving in the right direction. Um, so that's always important with me. Um, I, I definitely want to give a shout out to all of the, the mentors that helped me uh, on this road, because this is, as we know, a little piece of uh, what everybody uh, along the way uh, imparts on our, uh, on our leadership and our, our structures and our systems. And so uh, this is, to me, these are the five parts that I have found to be the uh, extremely important and, and essential when uh, we're building those planes. So uh, I would have loved to have heard this when I was first getting into administration. And maybe uh, also if you haven't, if you're, if you're in it, maybe this will, uh, maybe a part of this could be helpful for you. So uh, let's begin. So my first question just to everyone is as a principal or educator, what is your focus? So I'm going to ask you just to jump in the chat right here. And if you don't mind, just put put what what do you think your focus is? What is your what is your essential job? We know safety is is a made is the number one priority. But outside of safety, what would be um, your focus as an administrator? So if you want to jump in the chat, I see student learning. Yes, remove barriers. Absolutely, yes, students. Building relationships with stakeholders, building relationships with staff and students. Absolutely. Empowering students and staff to be their best, student learning, creating a great uh, culture. Yeah, and, and I'm, I, I appreciate that, helping your children develop. These are all major parts of um, what our job is. Um, and I think I, what I, what I want to boil this all down to is, is student achievement. We want our students to achieve, um, whether that's social emotional, whether that's academically, we want them to achieve at high levels and be able to um, be successful citizens in the end. And so part of that is, is ensuring that we give them all of the uh, necessary tools and, and instruction that they need. Um, and so I think these, these parts make up um, how we do that. So I'm gonna start us off with, uh, let me see here is communicating a shared vision. And I think this is extremely important because as we just talked in the, in the chat right there, um, is that when we're communicating a shared vision, we are creating that common ground. We're creating this, the same conversation so that if there are times that there are um, disagreements or um, you know just a different idea of how to go about things, the important thing is that we have a shared vision that student achievement um, and it is the um, bedrock of where we all are, are coming from. And so at that point, we have common ground and we're building together. And so I think creating a shared vision with your staff is extremely important. Um, we've all been, we all know those mission and vision statements that are 20 years old in our school um, that, are, that are just the, that they are, they are there, they're kind of wallpaper. Um, I would encourage you to take a look at those um, and, and dust those off a little bit if, if, uh, if you have those that are that old and revisit them with your staff because oftentimes um, coming in as a new principal and I'm in my third year um, I, as a new principal of my elementary building here in uh, Woodford County, Kentucky, um, we, we, they had recently redone it, but I just, I, I wanted to keep it in front of them because I thought it was an important piece. And so, as you can see, I, our, 
like I just said, mission and vision, share terminology. Um, they create a focus for your staff. They keep keep student learning and student achievement at the forefront of what we do. And that way it's not a personal thing. And then you can also have the ability to have tough conversations. Um, oftentimes, uh, tough conversations are very nerve wracking for a principal, but if they are rooted in student achievement and helping students, then those conversations aren't as hard. Um, it, it's also to be communicated um, throughout the building, your purpose overall as an administrator. Um, and like I said, it's the building block. So uh, this is a, an example. What I'll try to do is give you an example um, within our building. Um, I, I review this at every faculty meeting. I create that common vision and mission. Um, it seems redundant at times. And oftentimes my, my teachers may be like, oh, here it is again. Um, but I think it's important. It's extremely important to have that in front of the staff so that they know what their purpose is. I know what my purpose is. We are all here to ensure that our students are getting uh, what they need from our school. It also helps to communicate the vision to the uh, community that this is, when you send your students here, this is what, what we as a school believe in, and we are, here, we are here to provide for your students and your children. And so I think that is always a good message uh, just to keep in front of you. It keeps the focus on, uh, on student achievement and keeps, uh, keeps everybody in the same direction, rowing that same boat at the same time. Uh, I also, um, I actually went to a leadership uh, conference with CKEC this summer, and they asked us to do a, our own vision statement. What is my vision as an administrator? What do I feel like I want to do um, at this building to help? And so I actually created one this summer. Um, I read it to our staff um, uh, before the school year, just so that they know a little bit about me and what, where, where I come from, what I believe, and, and how, what my vision is for the school building. So um, I felt like this was a very needed part. It, it, helped, to, uh, it, it helped to maybe break down some, uh, some barriers with some staff members, but also to have some of those conversations of, oh, I didn't, feel, I didn't know you felt that way, or I've seen you do this. I didn't realize why you did this. And so some of those conversations were great just to have uh, in order to keep us um, to, to, to allow them to get to know me a little bit better, uh, especially coming in as a new administrator, but also um, just a reminder that this is my belief system too. The next thing I would recommend is to form a lead team. I think this is essential in every building. Um, uh, and I'm going to jump into the purpose. So form a lead team within the building and shared decision making. Um, it empowers members within your building, um, and then it also allows them to feel invested in, as they execute that plan. Um, what I would recommend to create is representation from um, all parts of your building, whether you're an elementary, a middle, or a high school. Um, I've actually been at all three levels. Um, I was a teacher at the high school, assistant principal at middle, and now a principal at elementary. Um, I think it's extremely important to have representation from every level. Um, we've all uh, we've all probably uh, experienced. Well, um, I don't feel like we're being represented or having those conversations. This takes a lot of that um, out of the picture and allows them to be a part of uh, the conversation and the decision making when it comes to um, their department or or their classroom and their building. So it also builds capacity within your staff um, to create leaders as we grow. I know I'm very thankful for the opportunities um, that I had to be a, um, a leader within my department um, when I was a teacher. And so uh, I would encourage you to help build that capacity within your building uh, by trying to empower some of those leaders and, and ensure that they have the opportunity uh, to build their leadership skills. Uh, re it reduces top-down decision-making. I feel like when we have those open conversations with the staff, um, they are able to understand the reasoning uh, behind a lot of the decisions. Um, and, and then it also doesn't feel like a top-down. We've all been a part of those, um, those buildings when, it, oh, this is a district initiative or this is a principal top-down uh, initiative. And so it kind of takes that part away. Um, I think it inspires staff members. I think it inspires them to, uh, to do better, to uh, do the best job that they can 
uh, with knowing the whole picture, and it pro provides accountability and clarity for it, uh, for for including administration. So I know I've got to walk the walk if I'm over here talking it, and so I think it's important for for uh, that as well. So next next up, this is just representation within my building. So kind of give you an idea of um, these are uh, my representatives. And so their job is to take back all the information from our MTSS meeting. Um, so our MTSS team is our lead team. Their job is to take back the information from those meetings uh, to their representatives. And so as you can see, we've got a K1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, specials, interventions, um, ELL. Um, we, we also have our uh, paraeducator representatives. So instructional assistants are represented, uh, school psych and administration, and then district. Um, so we felt like uh, actually this past year, uh, two years ago, we added on our uh, English language learners and then our para rep. Um, and that, is, that has been a, um, definitely a great upgrade to get some more conversation going about, hey, you know, we need to take a look at this as we're doing access testing and things like this, um, as well as our para, para representative who, um, if anybody's worked in an elementary, you know the paras um, are kind of the glue that keeps it all together, and they are asked to wear many, many hats, and so um, I, I definitely think they, de they deserve a seat at the table uh, and, and having those conversations, so uh, it's, it's definitely um, a great part of, uh, of our building, and I think it's an important part that we have representatives, and so what do we do at our meetings? Uh, what are we talking about? And so uh, at our meetings, oh, uh, there we go. At our monthly uh, meetings, we're, we're looking at data. Um, what I talk about our leadership team is that we will take a 30,000 foot view of our school. We're gonna look down at it and we're gonna see, hey, what, what are we seeing? Um, and we, we are very data driven. And so what we're gonna look at is we're gonna look at our map data. We're gonna look at our uh, academic data. We're also going to look at our discipline data throughout the building. Uh, we're going to look at staff wellness. We're going to have conversations about uh, upcoming items. Um, and, and as I said, just that transparency uh, provides a lot of great conversation uh, and, and oftentimes brings up things that uh, otherwise might get overlooked. Um, and so as an administrator, you know, you, you're uh, presenting to uh, this group, but also this is uh, a good data collection for your SBDM meetings afterwards. Um, and so this is all part of my process of, hey, I, I create this for uh, MTSS and then we jump into our SBDM. And so definitely uh, some, some joint decision-making, wanna make sure that there's clarity um, and, and uh, having that lead team is a huge part of it. All right, next up, uh, tiered system of supports. Uh, I, I think this is an essential structure uh, within our building. Um, we at, at, in Woodford County believe in the multi-tiered system of support, so MTSS, and this basically what it does is it ensures that uh, students don't fall the, through the cracks, and it gives us the opportunity to provide academic or behavioral, uh, social and emotional supports for students um, at all three tiers. So tier one, of course, is every student in our building is going to receive this academic and this behavior. Um, the way I've all, the way I like, I, I've heard it is uh, when some students at tier one don't respond, they need an extra label, layer of uh, targeted instruction, whether that's academic or behavior, um, and then they'll provide that. And so finally, uh, that'll be small groups. And then finally at the, at the third tier, you're gonna have those students that need um, very direct, intense instruction. And so you can probably think in your head, a few of those students, oftentimes behavior comes to mind, um, but academics, you've got those students that um, really are struggling, um, whether uh, we like to triangulate our data, whether that's, um, you know, DRAs, uh, map reports, um, all, all sorts of just uh, literacy assessments, math assessments, and we uh, do in PLCs and those sort of things. We want to ensure that um, every kid gets the supports they need. And so we believe in, in our multi-tiered system. Um, it gets away, um, it, it creates teacher accountability for all kids, but it also gets away um, from, from a very 
a bad case of I think I feel. Um, we no longer uh, are thinking and feeling about kids. Um, show me the data. Show me what you got so that we can make a data informed decision um, and move forward for this student. And so I, I think that's extremely important. Um, we don't want to, hey, I've taught for 25, 30 years and, and I know this kid just isn't going to get it. No, I want you to show me what the data is. Show me what where we're at and what we need to do. Um, and, and we'll talk about that data as a group. So um, we, we have a school-wide tracking system. Um, and this establishes kind of our bedrock for how we work as a school. This is that structure uh, as a building. Um, it also allows me to um, empower teachers in PLCs, RTI meetings, um, to be, the, be that next generation of leaders. So building that capacity once again. I'm gonna go through a few things. Um, I, I won't take too much time because I, I know many of you know these. Um, we, are, we meet weekly in PLCs. Um, we uh, are reviewing uh, formative and summative data um, based on assessments that we've already created um, that we're doing ahead of time. And then we wanna see if students are uh, growing or not. And then we will uh, use what we call our win time, what I need, uh, tier two instruction to address those uh, deficits or um, students that did not reach proficiency and uh, on, on uh, those assessments. We also believe in PBIS. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the next one. Uh, PBIS just allows those uh, expectations to be, to be defined in every area of the building. There is never any um, question about how you're supposed to act. Uh, when when those are defined. And so I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, John Hattie talks about um, his, his the effects of student on student achievement. So what has the greatest effect size? And if you're familiar with John Hattie, he says that 0.4 is one year's growth uh, for a um, for a student. And so these two effect sizes are two of the Two of the larger ones, 1.62 effect size for uh, teacher estimates of student achievement. Um, I feel like PLCs and structures like this within our MTSS um, allow our teachers to uh, feel like all students can achieve at a high level. Um, with that, that ensures that um, they are raising the bar. Um, we oftentimes have some teachers that teach to the middle or they say, hey, this kid can't, can't do this, so I'm not going to do this. Those PLCs set that foundation for what is grade level standards uh, and our teacher conversations within those uh, ensure that we have that high uh, estimation for student achievement. Um, and then 1.57 effect size, which is nearly four years worth of growth, uh, is coll collective teacher efficacy. And so just the belief that as a teacher, we can make a difference. And so that's really what you're looking for. And so when you're doing PLCs, when you're um, uh, implementing PBIS, when you have your multi-tiered systems of support and your structures in place, you are telling your teachers and you're supporting your teachers uh, for them to understand that what they do is important, what they do is valuable. Um, a substitute cannot walk in off the street and do what you do. Um, and so communicating that, that message um, and ensuring that they are treated uh, like professionals um, uh, is is extremely important and their belief in uh, what they can do is extremely important and so I think our support uh, within those systems and structures is is important for message for them to hear. Uh, one of the things that we do um, within MTSS is we're looking at our uh, behavior data. We want to see where the behavior is happening. We want to see what's happening, how many events, what day we want to kind of nail it down and make data informed decisions as I as I mentioned earlier. So we are looking at uh, our behavior analysis monthly and kind of seeing where uh, where we can make improvements or shifts or pivots uh, to improve uh, some of our structures. We also in our tier two and tier three we um, we are looking at um, RTI and PBIS data. So we are looking at students within our intervention system, and so we. Uh, our RTI system believes in meeting every six weeks. And so we meet every six weeks to review uh, students that need supports and data. Um, uh, so we're looking to see if those interventions work. Obviously, if they're not working, we're gonna cut that off, create, put a new intervention in place. And if that's not working, we're gonna look at uh, possible special education referrals. So all of this data builds up 
um, to the need for um, or all of the all of our efforts build up the need for for the data to make informed decisions for each and every student. All right, this is um, this is one of my favorite uh, things to say. We've got to have structure before instruction, otherwise we're spinning our wheels. Um, we have to make sure that we have um, behaviors and classroom management in place before any kid will ever listen to you. So uh, one of the things that we, uh, as I mentioned, we do uh, MTSS, we, we are gonna put in our tier one PBIS structure. I'm gonna go through this a little quicker, um, getting down to the last 10 minutes. Uh, I wanna give you a little time to ask questions if you have any. Um, we establish our, great, our, our school norms, define expectations, we have a set PBIS team that does, does these things. Um, we have a common language and we, we reduce behaviors from the majority of students. Our anchors are safe, kind, responsible, and a learner. We, actually, we have a large uh, Hispanic population, so we wanna make sure that uh, our, uh, we are uh, representing them uh, in, in, uh, in building equity within our building. We do a Northside pledge every morning uh, to remind them what the expectation is, uh, that have it in Spanish as well. Uh, but we also define what it looks like in every part uh, of our building, our classrooms, um, our hallways, our cafeteria. These signs are posted throughout the building to ensure that uh, expectations are, uh, are met. We also review these. Uh, we spend, and, and it's important, and I want you to know that Time at the beginning of the year is well spent when you're spending it teaching expectations because it's better to spend a week early on than a month trying to fix problems later on. And so we spend a lot of time uh, at the beginning of the year uh, teaching expectations. We have a rotation of they will walk down the hallways and they're going to practice how to sit at the cafeteria table, how to walk through the cafeteria line, how to use the restroom, uh, those sort of things. And then uh, we review those after every break. And so just ensuring that uh, we are we are intentional about that uh, helps us to get to instruction uh, quicker. All right. And then finally, um, I heard this when I was at a Kagan training um, in uh, for Kagan coaching in Florida, gentle pressure applied relentlessly. Um, and what that means is just progress monitoring. How are we going to ensure as an administrator that we um, are progress monitoring all of the systems and structures we have in place? Otherwise, why are we doing it? We have to ensure that these uh, can function over time. And so what gets monitored gets done. And so we all know that we all have had those initiatives, uh, whether it's a uh, your own principles or you uh, that that you start something and uh, it just kind of fades away or fizzles away. And so I think that it's extremely important to monitor that progress. And my approach is that I'm going to constantly do that. Um, I'm going to monitor that progress. I, I use gentle pressure. I don't feel like I have to be a heavy hand all the time. Um, I'm willing to do that if I need to. <clears throat> Excuse me. But I think in the beginning, if you are upfront and uh, clear with your expectation and uh, uphold that expectation throughout, then um, there's less need for that heavy hand later on. Um, and so uh, it ensures high quality, continues the focus of the mission and vision. Uh, there's clarity before competency. Um, it demonstrates my attention to the mission and vision. Uh, I model my priorities and I create a culture of continuous learning and improvement, and then everyone's held accountable. The one thing you can do is um, to upset a culture in a building is hold one person account not accountable and let and hold everybody else accountable. That's going to really upset. We know how that goes. That uh, that's just going to upset that culture in the building. So holding everybody accountable is important. One of the things that I do, um, we do weekly walkthroughs. My uh, curriculum coach and I. Um, we set our priorities, as you can see on here, um, learning intentions, uh, success criteria are extremely important to us. Um, these are all the things we've built over years. Um, we use Eureka Math, gradual release. We want to see Kagan. Um, obviously, not all the time we see Kagan, um, if you're familiar with cooperative learning. Um, and then to give them some glows and grows feedback. Um, and, and we give that to the teacher. We also use the Danielson framework. So as you can see, uh, we just got back from a break. We do a two week cycle on each Danielson uh, domain. So 2D managing student behavior, uh, especially coming back from a break was, was why we chose that one. So uh, there's more to the form that breaks down what, how I would have scored them in Danielson, which is 
uh, their evaluation method for our district. And so that gives them some feedback on um, how, I, how I view their classroom. And so I think that's extremely important. Um, we do weekly PLCs. As I mentioned, we are looking at uh, student data. We're looking at formative and summative assessments. How are they doing on that? Our teachers know that this is sacred time. Um, nothing will get in the way. I don't schedule anything on top of PLCs. Um, we are in here, we are working. Um, they also know to be on time and come prepared. And so that's extremely important uh, so that we are looking at data and making informed decisions uh, and using our time efficiently. Uh, faculty meetings, I think, are a great opportunity to um, remind the, the, uh, the staff of your mission and vision. I always open with my mission and vision. Um, I model what I expect uh, within the faculty meeting. Um, I try to use gradual release. I try to use Kagan. Um, I, I oftentimes will put those structures in place. Um, we have seating charts that uh, go with their groupings uh, for Kagan and, and allows, uh, there's different reasons for different groupings. And so they understand that. Um, I think it also reflects my priorities um, at the faculty meeting as I'm presenting, I'm modeling the way. Um, and it's also an opportunity to highlight uh, those staff members that need to be in front. Uh, we all have those staff member, members that are rock stars. And so uh, that's our chance to put them in front and say, hey, look at what, look at what they're doing. Let's all learn from this. Um, and oftentimes that, that will elevate you know, uh, each, each of our other teachers to, uh, to, to try to reach that level. And so that, that faculty meetings are, are extremely important. I think one of the things that I learned early on is, is to be visible within your building. Um, you know, it, it's so easy to answer emails, to do all of the district initiatives um, that you have um, that are coming down the pipeline uh, and whatnot, because there's so much on your plate, CSIP, whatnot, um, but you got to schedule that time for that. And so um, I encourage you during the day, be visible, be in classrooms, be in the hallways, uh, make sure that the students and staff see you. Um, doesn't always have to be in a, a, a walkthrough or evaluation. Just go in and help. Um, and that's that makes a big difference. Um, one of my favorite quotes also comes from Denzel Washington. It says, uh, without commitment, you'll never start. But without consistency, you'll never finish. And so as we're um, as you're undertaking some of these structures, um, just start somewhere, start with one, be good at one, one year, um, and then build on that. And then uh, most importantly, it, without consistency, you're never ever gonna have structures in place that stick. And so um, give yourself a chance um, to be consistent, whatever that takes, however your method is. Uh, we each have different ways, but ensuring consistency um, is, is making sure that that structure is not just one more thing that fades away and it, it becomes the fabric of your building and how you do business. And finally, here is my information. Wanted to uh, put this out here. If, uh, if you wanna contact me, email me. Um, I am uh, more than happy to, uh, to, to uh, give you any information, share with you any of the documents. If you want walkthrough documents or anything like that, I'd be glad to, to share those with you and you can feel free to uh, reach out to me. Um, that is my cell phone number, uh, just, don't give it to all the parents, right? Uh, but uh, feel free to use it and call me. I don't mind. Uh, so if there's any questions, Phil, I got two minutes. I think I I've been warned. So sorry, I talk a lot, but. And just remember, if anybody would like to meet with Mr. Hundley, the other breakout rooms, or if you'd like to have some time to continue this conversation. I certainly hope. Uh, thank you, Scott. You did a great. Thank you. Thank you. No. Sounds like there's some really great things going on at your school. Sounds like there's some really great things side in Woodford. Thank you. So thank yes. you for telling us about things. No problem. Do I need to hang here, or? Um, if you just want to wait, just maybe another minute in case anybody. Okay wants to stick around and ask you something, and then you can move to another breakout room, but I'll go ahead and stop recording and you guys can find your next session. Um, and then if you have any questions, just take a picture of that. If you don't want to meet in the breakout room and contact that separately. Thank you, everyone. Oh, Billy Edwards is in the chat, Mr. Hunley, that wants to know if you're the Scott Hunley that played at Scott County. 
I am. Yes.